Hi, this is Rich. I'm a member of Response Force Alpha, RFA, an online ARMA 3 gaming group who specializes in direct action. Um, and I'm one of the mission makers there. And uh, searched the uh, web to see how to do this, and I really couldn't find anything written down. I'm sure it's been done before. There are no original ideas in ARMA 3. Um, but I didn't see a video tutorial, so I thought I'd do this primarily for the other mission makers in Response Force Alpha. But of course, um, if anyone can find this useful, um, that would uh, make me very happy. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a suicide bomber. Um, and the idea is that the suicide bomber will detonate if he gets too close to Blue 4. Um, the reason I wanted to come up with this idea was I wanted to give my guys an opportunity to kill the suicide bomber um, and then be able to approach and search the body of the suicide bomber. Um, and this system actually allows for all of that. Uh, and it's a fairly portable, fairly lightweight, requires no scripting knowledge, requires no additional scripts to be added to your mission folder. Everything is done with um, what you see here uh, on my work um, my work screen right now. So let's put down the civilian. And by the way, this assumes you know how to use the editor, you understand triggers and the whole nine yards, because this is not going to explain how to put down a trigger. If you need help or get lost with putting down the triggers um, or what different parts of the triggers do, uh, there's so many completely awesome uh, tutorials out there that show those. Um, so you might want to go watch those and come back to this. So the first thing is you put down a civilian. It can be any civilian. Um, uh, I used, uh, you can see the default here. Um, make it, uh, name it, Bomber01. Uh, you're going to need to remember what that name is because you're going to use it later. If you want to use mine, um, naming system, that's fine. The beauty about this is if you put down multiple bombers, you just name them Bomber01, Bomber02, Bomber03, and it'll make changing the different sets of things you need to make this work easier because you're just going up in sequence. So I named mine Bomber01. Then what we need to do is we need to make him look like a suicide bomber. You need to give him a vest. Um, and the idea is that this makes it more fair to the players in the game. Because if you just have a civilian run towards you, uh, we certainly uh, have an ROE in our missions that we have to uh, PID, positive identification, before we can engage. And even sometimes we have to be engaged first. Well, if you just have a, su uh, a civilian running down the road, this should go against your ROE. So we're going to give him a vest. We use the simple command of add, this add vest. I chose the vest that has the 203 um, attached to the front of the vest because it looks like a... I've never seen one, but I would assume that's what a suicide vest looks like. Um, so that's the first command. If you copy this verbatim from the video description below, you won't have to worry about any of this, but make sure you put a semicolon uh, after that command. The next command is going to physically attach the bomb to him. Okay, I've named that bomb zero one, as you can see right here, attached to an awesome and well used command in the ARMA world. And then the, the final part of the command is actually what you're um, attaching it to. In this case, we're attaching it to our civilian bomber zero one. And then the numbers after that, these are positioning numbers. You really don't need to worry about that in this case um, because it's not something that's visual. Once you have that, it's set. So you're going to put down your civilian. Let's give him waypoints. Make the first one really, really close, and you'll see why in a minute. Behavior careless. If you don't choose careless, what will happen is the minute he sees anything or he's spooked, he'll stop. And that's not going to look like someone. Uh, is, that's not a typical behavior for this type of uh, combatant. So um, I'm basically going to have him run up, run around this corner. So he's hiding behind this wall. And that's another important point. You need to hide your suicide bombers so they're not obvious. Um, and they actually dash out from behind something and uh, run towards your guys. So you can see I'm basically going to keep him in the middle of the road by giving him very direct waypoints. Um, and we're going to have him go to this intersection because this will be the intersection where we place the trigger to actually have him come out and run towards the guys. Okay, so I'm going to basically um, put a loiter command as the very last waypoint, uh, which will be on top of my uh, trigger, which you'll see in a minute. Before we put any more triggers, let's attach the bomb. Um, and the bomb is actually this trigger right here that I, I prepared earlier. 
pull up the uh, trigger, you'll see that this is, so bear in mind, this is physically being attached to the civilian. That's what that command did that I showed you. So no matter where the civilian goes, this trigger will follow him around the map. So by doing it 10 by 10 for a circle, anything that trips this trigger, which in this case, the activation is blue four, as soon as a blue four gets within 10 meters of um, the civilian, it's gonna activate this trigger. And this trigger is in fact the bomb. Okay, so it's not the civilian blowing up per se, but this trigger. But because the trigger is attached to the civilian, perception is reality, right? So we've named this bomb zero one because if you remember, in the um, civilian, we're attaching this to him. Um, activation blue four, you see right there. Okay, uh, condition this, leave that as it is. And then the final piece of script is a well used script all around the armor world. People use it for minefields, IEDs, all sorts of things. Um, I actually looked long and hard to find this particular ordinance, and it's important because this ordinance is probably the smallest explosion out of the ones I tested. If you can find a smaller one, and you want a smaller one, that's even better. And you should actually let me know in the comments because that would be great. Uh, my idea was I wanted to make the mission challenging but not um, silly so that way if say for instance uh, they didn't uh, eliminate the suicide bomber in a timely fashion the people at the rear of the formation may only be wounded or get away altogether which wouldn't happen and didn't happen because I tried um, several different uh, ordinances if you use a larger uh, explosion so that's all you need Okay, and as I said, this will be in the video description below, so you can just copy and paste it so it looks exactly like my example here. Now, the beauty about this is it doesn't need to be anywhere near the civilian. If you're like me and you like to keep a clean workspace for your missions, uh, I tend to put it to one side. And the beauty about putting it to one side, if you're going to have more than one suicide bomber, it makes it easy to copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. And I'll show you that towards the end. So now that we have the actual um, civilian, we have the bomber. Uh, the bomb. Let's actually create the trigger that's going to make him um, spring into action. This is the intersection. The beauty about this is um, regardless of which way anyone's patrolling, if they're patrolling, this is north, this is south, this is east, and this is west for the directionally challenged out there. If anyone's traveling from the north in a southerly fashion, um, you'll see they'll hit it. If they're going north, they'll run into it. And if they're coming um, East, they'll run into it. The only time they might see them is if they take this road here, and in which case, yeah, what can I tell you? Um, so what happens is uh, a person will hit this trigger. So what we want to do is we want to connect it to the waypoints, because if I leave this as it is, as soon as we start the game, this guy just run out here and he'll be standing there. And by the time your guys are inserted, he'll just be standing in the middle of the road. So we synchronize this as we do with triggers and waypoints. Okay. And what this means is for those who haven't maybe gotten familiar with triggers and waypoints, is this guy will stand here until blue four walks into um, this circle. And then he'll say, oh, I need to go my next waypoint. And then he'll run and just follow the waypoints. So he'll just stand there um, watching the world go by. You might want to go in the editor. This will be easier when we get the 3D editor and actually snuggle him up against the wall so it looks like he's making an effort to hide. And that adds an air of realism to it. So what will happen is uh, he comes running around the corner. Um, the reason I gave 10 meters is he's far enough out to where people still have an opportunity to identify him. And if you notice, I gave a pretty long run up for the guys to go, hey, there's someone running towards us. Um, report the contact, evaluate the contact, and make the decision, well, he's got a vest, he's running towards us, maybe we should... Um, this is agreeing with my ROE, and I can um, I can actually engage this person. But and what will happen is if you don't shoot them, no matter where your people are, if your people are, and let me put someone down, I'll myself down, and these are all the different uniforms we have, which are all custom, by the way. So if I put myself down, if I walk here, as soon as I activate this trigger. Um, it doesn't matter where I walk. I can walk all the way up to here, if I beat him to it. Um, he will actually blow up around me and not around this trigger. Okay. We need to add one more thing to this. Um, standard military practice to go over and search the body once it goes down. Um, if we left it as it was, 
even if you killed the suicide bomber, when you approached him, the trigger is still very much alive. Because remember, it's the trigger that actually has the bomb on it. And the minute that your guys come within 10 meters of the dead body, they'll blow up, which once again is not fun. So to get rid of that, we use a simple alive script, okay, which is the trigger you saw lying over there. And you were probably wondering when I was going to get to this. This is a simple trigger. Make it to zero, zero, which if you look, what that does is that just doesn't have a circle around it because this does not need a radius to be triggered. Um, I just do that because I like to keep, have a clean workspace, as I mentioned. Um, there is no type. There is no activation um, because this is going to be a conditional trigger, and that is the condition right here. This is a really good command here, alive, exclamation mark, alive. And what this means is this means as long as this person or this vehicle that this uh, is referring to is alive, um, the trigger isn't triggered. The minute that the trigger, uh, the, the vehicle or the person dies, the trigger goes, hey, he's dead, and it will go through, and it will do what you tell it to do. Okay? So, a live bomber 01, in other words, this is monitoring the health of your civilian. The minute the civilian dies, what it does is it deletes the trigger, which is the bomb. So, now it deletes the bomb. So, effectively, what you've done is once you've killed the civilian, um, you've deactivated the bomb, and if we were comparing this to the suicide bomber who would have to physically press the button, um, then you sort of have reflected, unfortunately, um, what is used out there. So I put this over here, and I will show you how it's so easy to rinse and repeat. Now let me actually show you uh, what this looks like in action, and we'll do two things. First one is I'm not going to shoot at him. And he'll just run up and he'll blow me up. <laughs> and I don't normally, uh, RFA does not play in third person. We play in first. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into um, third person so you can see how close he actually physically gets to me as a player in the game. All right. So it's a low profile patrol, which means we're just walking and looking around. Um, now you will notice this is the intersection. I'm walking towards the trigger, and what will happen as soon as uh, I enter the trigger, which should be about here, he'll start running down the road at me. And if you look, I have a very good view of where I'm going, and this allows your fellow players an opportunity to see him. All right, so you can see that he's running towards me. Um, I have an indecisive commander behind me, and he's not letting me engage, so this guy's coming really close. The beauty is, because I've got him running through... There you go, I'm dead. Because I've got him running through... That made me jump. Because I've got him running through the trigger, he would just keep running past me. But of course, and you can see by the, uh, uh, the end screen that uh, I did not survive that encounter. Um, we're going to go back in, and I'm going to show you the... The better ending. Um, you can see that because uh, I had the AI running through the trigger, um, unless I was walking through the path that you'd probably see the suicide bomber anyway, uh, they're most likely going to um, still be walking in that direction. Um, certainly close enough if you have a long formation that uh, you'll still have people there. Which actually, this is really good because even if you're running from uh, north to south, the suicide bomber is going to be running behind you, and then he'll just loiter in that area. Uh, that's a really good practice to make sure your guys on the tail end, Charlie, are actually paying attention to their zone. All right, I'm going to do the low profile again. I'll let you see this. Uh, and you can see I took my time uh, to show you that the trigger does in fact work, the fact that the suicide bomber has not run out, and he won't run out until I hit this trigger. And bear in mind, this trigger is not what's setting off the bomb. It's actually the trigger attached to the guy. We'll get ourselves prepared because he's going to come around. So let's stop here. Take him out. And then let's do one more for luck. Because bear in mind, if he's alive as I approach, the bomb, which is the trigger, is still active. So uh, we're going to do what's fondly known in our group as a... Double tap. All right. He's voluntarily dead. Let's run up to the guy now. And you will see I can walk right up to him. 
look at his body. Oh yeah, definitely a suicide bomber. And once again, you can see the vest. Um, and I actually think it's pretty cool to have a suicide bomber in shorts because uh, it's not stereotypical. So that is uh, it in action. Works really, really well. Um, as I said, there's no scripting involved, and it's very easy to rinse and repeat because basically all you would do is you would copy this guy right here, copy a couple of the waypoints because they're a pain to actually do. Um, and this is actually where I put him on the mission we did recently. So if I put the guy here behind this fence, have him run out here. Remember, you got to keep one very close for the waypoint, then have him run down here. I'm not going to do all the waypoints. This is just to show you how you can rinse and repeat. Um, and then I control C, control V. Now you can see I've got an exact copy. So you go to him, change him to bomber two, right? Bomb O2, because we're taking everyone up a notch to bomber O2, right? See how easy this is? Then come over here. This is your second set of triggers. Bomb O2. Doesn't have to change that. You're fine. Then you change this right here. Um, now this trigger, if we just left it, he's basically just monitoring uh, your first civilian. So it won't really help you in this matter. And then you need to update the trigger reference as well. Then you just copy and paste this puppy right here. Uh, if it is suitable for where you want these guys, um, you can put it over this intersection as well. And then finally, synchronize this to your waypoint so he doesn't run out now if i move my guy over there you will see it will do the same thing um, but just in a different area and once i've laid down those initial triggers that took me what 10 15 seconds to do the suicide uh, bomber again uh, I wouldn't put too many of these down on the map just because it'll get old really quick for your fellow players and they won't like you much as a mission maker. Here he is now. Look at this. There's his vest suicide. Let's take him out because he's going to blow me up otherwise. Oh, see? He's still moving. One more for luck. Go up. And there you go. He went down. And I guarantee you, if I had left it, he would have blown me up. And you can see that he just popped out of there. You can see that he was down there. You could have hidden him in the bushes. And even if the patrol had been coming this way, uh, they wouldn't have seen him. They would have gone to about this point. The guy would have walked around that uh, wall and come at them. And as I said, the person at the rear of the formation, that would have been their zone. And you'd find out real quick if they were actually looking back and covering it. That is it. It's a very, very simple um, thing to use in missions. Uh, just copy and paste it, keep it on a notepad uh, for all the different commands and things that go in the different uh, triggers and and uh, init lines and stuff like that. Uh, if you're looking for a group, uh, Response Force Alpha, we have a lot of fun. Meet every Sunday at 1300. We do an hour, hour and a half's worth of training, then roll into a unique and different mission every week. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope you enjoy this. Hope you get a lot of uh, great missions out of this. And uh, let me know if you can see any improvements that we can do this in any way. I'm Rich from RFA, and I really appreciate your time on this video.